I feel most responsible picking out a film when it comes to this one, you know. Because I want you to explore Korean films that are not just entertaining and fun, but also meaningful and somehow, you know, significant to Korean culture. And so I have been contemplating for this week and came up with this one. I chose this film, Sunny. I'm not sure how many of you have seen this one, uh, but it did pretty well at the box office, especially when it came out. And the actresses who did the high school roles, the younger version of the major characters, became hugely popular, including Shim Eun-kyung and Kang Sora. Shim Eun-kyung won uh, the Best Actress for her performance in The Journalist, which is Japanese film. Especially it's meaningful because she won that award at Japanese Academy Award, which is not really usual. And in terms of Kang Sora, I think she appears in a lot of K-dramas rather than movies since then. So she's going strong as well. Sunny is a 2011 comedy and music drama. There's a lot of great songs in the film. And the film is about a middle-aged woman played by Yu Ho Jung who tries to fulfill her friend's dying wish of finding their old friends back in their high school. And from then, the film alternates between two timelines, the present day where uh, the women are middle-aged, I think it's around in late 40s, I think, and the 1980s when they were all in high school. So naturally, there is a lot of flashbacks in the film. It, the story constantly goes back and forth. And the film is directed by writer-director Kang Young chul um, He previously directed Scandal Makers, Kwasok Scandal. Scandal Makers was a family comedy that became a giant sleeper hit. I think that was the best uh, movie of the year in terms of box office score. Um, it was also his debut film. That was his first film. And the star, Park Bo Young, as well, she became like superstar with his Scandal Maker. I think Kang Young Chol is really good at picking out, you know, new talents and make them into superstar. Story wise, um, Nami, the major character, comes from a small town in Jolla province to her new school in Seoul. When she's nervous, she, she, her small town dialect comes out and she starts to shake. And on her first day at her new high school, as always, she's bullied by others. Coming to her help is a group of six girls. And I'm going to give you a short introduction about these six girls, which is a key to understanding this movie. The girls are Chun Hwa, known for her strong sense of loyalty and excellent fighting skills. Um, it's performed by Kang Sora. And heavy set Chang Mi, who badly wishes to have plastic surgery to get double eyelids, Sankapur. And there is also Jin Hee. She's excellent when it comes to spewing profanity. And we also have Kumok. She's interested in literature. There is Poki. She dreams of one day becoming Miss Korea beauty pageant. And Suji. She's always arrogant but beautiful. And Nami quickly becomes part of this group. So all these seven girls then from uh, form their own group and they uh, name the group Sunny. They also vow to stay together forever. The girls prepare for a performance at an upcoming school festival one day. But on the day of their performance, there's terrible accident happens. And this accident leads the girls to eventually going their own separate ways forever. And then, 25 years later, Nami is married to a successful businessman. And she has a decent life, you know. She has a beautiful daughter and apartment. Practically, she has everything. Her life seems perfect from afar, but there's something lacking in her life, she complains. And one day, Nami bumps into this high school friend, Chun Hwa. Uh, Chun Hwa is played by Jin Hee Kyung, an older version, in the hospital. And they're so happy to see each other, but Nami receives a phone call suddenly and has to leave. 
And on her way out, she asks Chun Hua, Oh, if there is anything I can do for you. And Chun Hua makes a simple request to Nami. Chun Hua asks Nami to find the other members of Sunny so she can see them one more time. The movie released in 2011, see? And Sunny was the first film of the year to sell over 7 million tickets in South Korea. And that was just huge achievement um, of the time. And it became the second highest grossing Korean film by the end of the year. And the director, Kang Young chol won Best Director at the Grand Bear Awards. And actress Kang Sora, she played uh, the younger version of Chun Hwa. She won several awards for her role as Chun Hwa, and this film surely got the attention from critics and audience altogether. Um, I love all the actors here, all 14 characters combined the young and grown-up versions. Um, the director's screenwriter's large ensemble of 14 characters all stand out. Music. News. Information. Everything about Korea. Arirang, Arirang. Radio. This movie, you know, as a coming-of-age film, I think it does all what it's supposed to do. Um, it has its humor, nostalgia, and memories, you know, the, the things you, you might have as you're in your childhood. And this reminds me of Now and Then. It's an old classic Hollywood film that came out in 1995. Um, it starred Christina Rich, Rosie O'Donnell, Melanie Griffith, Demi Moore. It's, it has a fantastic cast. But somehow, I have to say, Sonny, it's a lot better film than Now and Then in terms of its delivery, the way the film mixes laughs and crying, tears. The film may not seem to have its overarching thesis, but, you know, this isn't that kind of film. It's just a feel-good movie, you know. It's a movie that's absolutely in love with its characters, where the majority of the film is spent building this friendship and relationship and putting that friendship through trials and problems. So it may not be like, you know, Mother by Bong Joon-ho or some other film noir. It may not have pessimistic tone of most popular Korean films you may have seen. But it's nice to have a movie with a happy ending, you know. Because although happy endings may not be greedy or realistic, it's definitely worth it when you, um, whether the trials or all the problems that get in the way when you do it with the company of those you care about. And if anything, maybe that's what Sonny is about. On a side note, the movie is beautifully shot. The cinematography is excellent there. And it has beautiful sets of the 1980s. And also they have great songs and acting as well. And I want to emphasize about the fashion. Fashion is excellent. I think much time and attention is invested in their hairstyles and costumes and, you know, accessories and etc. Such as Zhang Mi's fake eyelashes or Boki's extreme sort of like Afro perm to turn their physical and body language into extensions of their characters. Their excellent use of 80s pop songs not merely furnishes the story with a vivid, nostalgic background. The careful choice of lyrics helps to articulate feelings the characters are unable to express in words, such as the very different moods evoked by Cindy Lauper singing time after time on the radio in the opening, and Tink and Patty's soul version during end credit. So it's really just fun, beautiful movie. Snap files, <laughs> eat your heart out. Someone mentioned it's kind of like the breakfast club of Korea in the sense of all the youthful angst. But I think it's slightly more tacky and more enjoyable. It's just a piece of fun cinema that really resonates with that heartwarming feelings.